the cares of life that seem to weigh me down. Yes, to worship our in me needs consistency. To lift my hands to give you. As we do characteristically, and you know, we put them down, put them down, put them down. Let me tell you something. You say, why does Pastor ask me to do that every Sunday? I tell you, because once you do it now, your hand is glued to the hem of his garment. But when you go into the world, you disengage your hand from the way you live your life. From your life that is not saturated with prayer and praise and everything. With a life that's not saturated with thanksgiving. You should give your hand. That's why you have to do it all the time. <laughs> Amen. We pastors are lucky, we have to preach the gospel. By the time we are praying or we are preparing for a message, we get engaged, we get hooked to the home uh, to the home of his commandment. Does that make sense to any of us? Put up your two hands to heaven, those of us who are going to be victorious to the end of this year. My Father in heaven, I decree in the mighty name of Jesus that every hand lifted up be glued to the hem of your garment. Amen. So must the blessing, victory, anointing, favor, and grace be flow unto all these lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Daddy, Amen. for praying with us, giving us a clap offering to the Almighty Lord. Amen. We shout of Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. Verses 5 to 13. Cultivated by others. 
and labor over the land was finished by others. This is the land God has promised you, and this is, this is the land that God has brought us into. If you are moving in the spirit, you will discover that this land looks familiar. Amen? Amen. A land where everything appears to be working. A land where we don't hear about power failure. A land when every tap you open runs with water. A land where however you get to or however fine your automobile is, your car, you don't run into portals. <laughs> A land where food is plentiful, both junk food and also original food. A land where designer garments are on sale throughout the year. I'm sure you know the land I'm talking about. Yes, Compare with any other land. What is that land called? Yes, I didn't hear you. Yes, Come on, put your hands together for a lot. <laughs> so if the Lord has brought you to this land in the physical realm, a land where you go to sleep, even when your windows are opened, and there's security. You know, when I was in Nigeria, <laughs> I had a dog but I gone. Because I wanted to protect my daughters if anything happened. Before anybody begin to rape my wife or rape my daughters, I'll be done, I'll be, I'll be gone. But then, they also will be gone. I had a gun that I had no courage to use. <laughs> if they came, but they didn't come. Amen. Thank God for that. Because when they came to my neighbor's place, I was jellyfish under the cover with my loaded double barrel. <laughs> now remember that this other land we are talking about, I was driving, my driver was driving me from Lagos back to Ibadan on a Sunday. And midway, I just had a big sound on my car. Somebody from the forest had thrown a mighty rock my car. Luckily, they missed their target. They wanted the windscreen, but they don't get the windscreen. They got the trunk, and I looked back, and I saw the rock passing up the road. Now, I remember that a friend of mine, a pharmacist, had died on the road because of a similar thing. And this is the land that God has brought us. <laughs> Amen. A land where everybody can be a DJ without buying any record. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together for a dog. Is this not a wonderful land? Oh! A land where we can change our appearance. A land where we can tell God that these eyelashes are not sufficient. <laughs> Let me design my own. And then you see all kind of false eyelashes <laughs> breaking all over the place. A land where we say, these my nails are too short. Make them longer. A land where I say, the color of my nails as made by God is not good. Red, pink, yellow, all kind of. A land where we walk as if we created ourselves. A land where the young man cannot run up the staircase because of obesity. <laughs> Come on, it's not a love matter. It's not. It's a serious matter. It means we don't appreciate the goodness of the land. And that's why you and I and not the way we're supposed to be. A land where those other people who did not make it are envying you and they're looking at you as if you're a bundle, a bundle of donors. A land 
when people will call you to say, brother, sister, we need to hear from you. I know you know that. And uh, put your hands together for God. To me, it's like God just elected a crop of people, favored people, unholy people, unrighteous people. But because He said, I will have compassion on who I will have compassion. I'll be gracious to who I will be gracious to. He packed us, all of us together, and allow us the visa to come and study. And they finish studying, they refuse to go back. <laughs> F2 or J2 must be adjusted. The land when some of us came to visit, six months, we are still visiting. <laughs> After six years. That's your story. That's my story. Has he ever occurred to you to sit down and ask, but God, why am I so favored? I feel here, well. I want to pray a peculiar prayer for you this morning. That the favor that God has given you, He will not take it away from you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I had a testimony of somebody in New York. He had never committed anything. It was ordinary traffic offense, which you and I commit free of charge. I committed and he fell to the hand of a wicked officer. And the questions to questions to questions to questions. That's a prayer that we pray that you can never be as wise as the person watching you. Never. Because of traffic offense, he found himself back in Okokopioko, Lagos. Just close your eyes for a while and picture what his life will be in that place. Just, just close your eyes for a while. Now open your eyes. I want to explain to you that comparison, and you know it's horrible, is less than one millimeter percent of the difference between heaven and hell. You know somebody who lived in a horrible country, where they were killing each other, malign each other, kidnapping each other, cheating each other. Rape each other. If that person finds himself or herself in hell, eh, may be comfortable for him because he used to it when he was on earth. Can you imagine somebody who has a kind of life that we have? Ah, everything is working. That is working. What I explain, free of charge. In fact, you spend money that you don't have. Of people throw credit cards at you. Can you imagine being in the United States of America, God's own country? And you will not end up in hell where nothing works. That will not be your portion. Amen. I said that will not be your portion. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> I want to talk about the promised land. So, the title of this message is The Promised Land. Now, I'm going to mention to you one or two characteristics of the promised land. And when I'm speaking, if any prophecy comes, please receive it personally. Receive it gloriously. Amen. Amen. And then you give the Lord the clap of him, even as you accompany with Amen. For example, Papa says there's somebody here who will never sorrow again. Yeah. Now let me tell you about the promised land. The promised land is not your land until you get there. 
<laughs> Otherwise, it remains a promise. Do you know that some of us are in America, but they are not getting to America? Oh, hello? Do you hear what I said? Some of us are here, but we are not yet in our mentality. The way we are thinking. This place is the way it is because some people walked consensuously and diligently. This place is a place that exists now because even slaves lost their lives over here. And so if you get here, you let the opulence of the land deceive you. You become lazy. You are looking for a shortcut. Boy, girl, you are, not, you are in America, but not yet in America. That's why I will never, never stop encouraging you to go higher. Somebody say, go higher. Go higher. Yeah. You have, I, I know still of people who came here, who are, who are doctors, who are engineers, but who came here, who started all over again. Started from being nursing assistants, but now they are professor of medicine. Amen. And you are playing the lottery. Keep on playing the lottery. <laughs> and let me tell you, you are not the one playing the lottery. It's the lottery that is playing you. <laughs> and talk to anybody. Say, I hope the pastor is not talking about you. <laughs> Boy, get, get real. Amen. Get real. The promised land is not yours until you get there. Otherwise, it remains a promise. When I got to America, I never had social security number before. I've never had about it before. I thought I could just walk in with all my engineering degrees, and there are many. Trust me. I could walk into any engineering job. I walk over the place. They look at me strange. <laughs> when I bring my circuits out, they think uh, I'm a mechanic. <laughs> Remember a fellow of Nigeria East of Engineers, a fellow of Eastern of Syria, of Great Britain. Thank you, Lord. Tell you somebody it will get better. <laughs> Just don't give up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's somebody here that God will propel miraculously by His grace to a proper promised land in the name of Jesus. Now let's talk more about the promised land, the characteristics. Getting to the promised land requires the following. Number one, serious work. Number two, ability to overcome challenges. Number three, determination to, to be victorious. Number four, determination to have a good life. To participate in what we call the American dream. But if you are not careful, there's a thin line separating American dream from American nightmare. Thin line. I met somebody who has been in this country for 35 years. All these children are American citizens. But he has no papers. For 35 years, still living under shadow. And he's, he's looking like he's too late for him to do anything. Those of you who are religiously minded, we say, ah ah, Pastor did not start with prayer. He's talking about serious work, ability to overcome challenges, determination to be victorious. He didn't. I, I, I think prayer should be number one. Yes! But I know you guys. Some of you will pray and go to sleep. And then nothing happens. <laughs> Amen. The background of prayer is a giving to a child of God. Say that with me. Say, the background of prayer is a giving 
to a born again Christian. So all those things that we are talking about, they have to be on the background and foundation of prayer. So let me recap. Number one, I said, promised land is not yours until you get there. Number two, I said getting there requires a few things. And I mentioned the things. Number three, promised land is a reward. Somebody say a reward. reward. Promised land is a reward. And what reward, or reward of what, is a reward of diligence and faithfulness. No. Diligence and faithfulness, not in the things of the world, but diligence and faithfulness in the things of God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Let me just make a short demonstration to you here by this next revelation. The next revelation is that the distance between your location and your promised land is fixed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some people are moving the spirit. Let me say again. I said the distance between your location and your promised land is what? Fixed. It's fixed. Amen. And God fixed it. Amen. And, God, and that's why God gave you the number of years you live on earth. Amen. Amen. Now, this is the corollary. Even though the distance between your location and your promised land is fixed, but the route to your promised land is variable. <laughs> yeah, the route is variable. There are roots that are vicious circles. The distance is fixed. Amen. But if you don't get the right revelation, if you're not led by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God, if you're not a child of God, because the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if I want to move from this speaker to that speaker, the distance is short and it's fixed. But where I lack revelation, where there are distractions, <laughs> I can move from here, dancing disco, doing parties, to here. Getting involved with all kind of groups who are going nowhere. And move like this, playing stupid politics with your life. Messing up with your matrimony. Insulting your husband, abusing your wife. Long term. And then when you come to yourself, ah! Yes. God help me. This is where I'm going. I go down eventually at the age of 80. Amen. May the Lord have mercy. Amen. And that's one. That's what happened to the children of Israel. A journey of 40 days took 40 years. And then some of us can say, if you are helping, oh, wow. That's where I'm going. I can see it. How many of you can see where many of us can see where we are going? But to get there is really the problem. Then you say, okay. Oh, sister, how are you? Do you know where I'm going? I'm going to get from that speaker to that speaker. Are you going to the same place? <laughs> and I say, yes. I want to go, but what are you doing? Don't kill yourself. It's better. It should be easy. We will get there. So what's happening? What happened to Mr. Babette? What happened to this? And gossip and gossip and gossip and all kind of stupid story happens. May your life not be like that. Amen. Some, this is the speaker, that the speaker, the distance is fixed, but there are obstacles. I can't jump over this thing, no. I can't, who can help me? That kind of thing. Who? Well, the other speaker is still there. This other speaker. <laughs> <laughs> May you not miss your direction. Amen. When 
when it comes to life destiny. In the name of Jesus. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Now, as many as are going in the wrong direction, I take the authority that I have in Jesus Christ as his son to recall you back. Many of you, you want to be where you like to be. As your father and Lord, to keep on drumming to your ears that your location now <laughs> is not the end by itself. It's a means towards an end. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hmm. Another thing about journey to promised land, which is Revelation number 5. Journey to the promised land is solitary and individualistic. You don't go to the promised land in groups or associations. You don't do it. If you are lucky you have any companionship, it's the Holy Spirit and your family. It's the Holy Spirit and your family. And sometimes life will throw you up and down as you appear as if you are lonely. Boy, girl, <laughs> you find yourself at that level, you begin to thank God. Because then the chances of you being distracted are minimized. Amen. 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 There is somebody here, you know you are in the wrong company. The association of friends that you are keeping. And that association is not going anywhere. I pray that by blood, by fire, Amen. my father will separate you Amen. from ungodly association Amen. that will make you miss your destiny Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. The next revelation I want to give us is that you know what we call navigation, right? The navigational system. The surest navigation to the promised land is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the surest navigation. That's Revelation number six. Revelation number seven. He said, Pastor, this Holy Spirit we are talking about. What is the assurance that I can always have it with you? This is the assurance. The Holy Spirit does not leave you nor abandon you at all, at all, until you expel him. Many of us are experts at getting the Holy Spirit out of our lives. Don't, don't, don't leave me alone. All right. No. Devil, get you behind me. Because your flesh is overpowering the Spirit. As many as are behaving in manners that make the Holy Spirit leave them with great blame, I pray that God Almighty Himself will call you back to your senses Amen. and embrace the surest helper that you have Amen. in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Revelation number 8, which is very good. When you choose to abandon the Holy Spirit, it doesn't force. He doesn't get angry. He's looking at you. Because why? He knows that if you are destined to reach your promised plan, you will come back to him. Amen. <laughs> I say that again. When you leave the Holy Spirit, you expel him. He knows your end. He doesn't force. He doesn't get angry. Because he knows that if you are destined to be the promised man, you will come back to him. He also knows that you have come to suffer. Remember the prodigal son. Amen. That the Jew prays a peculiar prayer. And I'm going to pray the prayer for us. He said that it is better. Not to be rich at 
at all. Than for you to have been rich and then become poor. With that could never be your situation. Amen. When you are up there and you come down, you discover those who pretend to like you, they really don't like you. I feel like preaching, but I don't like to preach. Let me end. I give you one or two more revelations and then we pray. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Revelation number nine. Your present location is bondage when compared to the promised land. <laughs> a professor, when I left Nigeria with uh, my wife and five daughters, abused. He abused me. He abused my father. He abused my grandfather. He's, he called me names. He said I was stupid. He said maybe I wasn't properly proper so that's why. I left I, I left behind everything. I was doing well. My wife was doing well. But we were moved by the Holy Spirit. We did not know we were moved by the Holy Spirit. And then we came here. Seven years later, the same professor came to the US. I we met at the party, he started begging, he started apologizing. He said he was one that was stupid. He said he was one that lacked vision. Because things changed so much within seven years that we left. I realized that, oh my God, these are children of God. So your present location right now is bondage when compared to the promised land. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's the reason number nine. Revelation number ten. A place of bondage may appear to you to be a comfort zone. A place of bondage may appear to you to be what? Hello? Oh, you have bachelor's degree or you have a diploma. So that's all right. I have a good job now. What am I bothering myself about? Mm -hmm. You have a lot to bother yourself about. Because life is dynamic. The way things are changing in this nation. All over the world. The way the entire world is becoming a global village. Somebody, one of my pastors in Maryland, shared something with me yesterday that frightened me. He said, Pastor Aaron, ah, I don't think I want to be going back to that country again. I said, it's said Nigeria. He said, things are getting worse and worse and worse. I said, what happened? He said, people that are trained in Nigeria by corporate companies in the world, hoping that they will stay in Nigeria. The moment they train them, they find their way to Canada. Is that the pilgrimage now from Nigeria of professionals, academicians, the direction is now Canada. <coughs> Everybody's going. Psh, psh, psh. Now those are people that, you know, there's a lot of fixes. I still remember my fixes a little bit. Is a body continues in a state of rest or continuous motion until impacted by an external force. <laughs> that was business. Many of you are in a state of rest of slow motion. All right. That is last. Uh, it's good enough. behind you who were earning 20 dollars per hour who went to 30 dollars per hour you sleep one day on duty you are gone so what you think <laughs> for now what you think is a comfort zone is a bondage And to cross your Jordan in life, you must abandon your comfort zone. Amen. Amen. You must do what? Abandon. I didn't hear you. Abandon your comfort zone. Hallelujah. Amen. And finally, somebody say finally. Amen. The last revelation. The space between you and your comfort zone is called the wilderness. The 
distance that is fixed between you and the promised land is called the wilderness. And the wilderness has some characteristics. When you think of loneliness, that's a wilderness. When you experience disappointments, that is wilderness. When you go to betrayal, that is the wilderness. When you go to sicknesses and diseases, that is wilderness. When you experience the mobility, that is wilderness. When you experience insults plus or minus injury, that is wilderness. Jesus Christ said, He who does not carry his cross daily and follow me is not worthy of me. The question is, are you worthy of him? May things of joy continue to flood your lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yesterday, I was very hungry in the evening after we finished our uh, shouts and we had a church meeting. I had a good lunch after the meeting. When I got to my, I was feeling sleepy. I was, I was feeling a bit uh, hungry. And I said to myself, let me cook some nice beans. I'm an expert at cooking succulent beans. Beans that we eat, that we met in your mouth. Amen. Yeah, that kind of beans I cook. You can ask my wife, or you can come to my house. I just cook some now. You won't take it away. But where am I going? And I remember that Lakers we play the game, we call them warriors. And I sat down and I began to watch the game. Ah, that game gave me joy. Because for the for a long time, yes, Lakers messed. Good. Messed them up big time in their own place. The very first game they will play in their new arena. Victory is sweet. I want to end by saying that your love song to him will be victorious. Be on your feet. 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 Begin to talk to the Almighty God now. Because we ended by saying victory is sweet. Amen. And we said sweet is about the promised land. And we said that distractions upon distractions upon distractions may make us move around and miss the target we are God is facing us. Close your eyes if you like to and open your mouth and talk to him. If you are under the influence of my voice and some of the things we are saying here uh, strange to you. Some of the languages and terminologies. You have heard them before, but they are not impactful in your life. Maybe because you are not yet really connected to Jesus Christ. And I pray for you that the Holy Spirit will come into your life powerfully. So much so that the language we are speaking, as heavenly language, we have many in your lives. In the mind of Jesus. If you want to be closer to him, you want him because he's not the idol of your heart. As a mark of obedience, you want him to come afresh and new into your life. Please follow me to put your right hand in the place where your heart is. So I pray with you. Yes. Lord Jesus, as many as are obedient in humility, who are putting their hands in the place where their hearts are, as a mark of submission and come into their lives, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you visit them afresh. 
you empower them afresh. And you take authority over their lives. So much so that songs of victory, songs of joy, will be their explicit recital at all times. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy, for praying with us, giving in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to pray. I want us to pray one or two things before before we I give out the microphone. Amen. I just need you to pray with me. A prayer of victory. Amen. Amen. Can I have the instrumentalist? We have the keyboardist quickly. I need to have some music background as we are praying, as we are shouting in, in prayer. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Say, Father. Father. Oh my God, you don't have any problem. Say, Father. Father. I reject. I reject. Every evil arrangement. Every evil arrangement. Concerning my life. Concerning my life. And my family. And my family. In the mercy of Jesus. Jesus. Say, blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus.